Greetings, pilgrims, to episode 13 of the Polygon Pilgrimage. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you a nifty little trick to create things like this table rather quickly. Now, as we can see with the table here, it's essentially in four quarters, and that's the essence of the trick, so to speak. We're making use of the pivot and of the symmetry modifier so that we can focus on creating one leg and one quarter of the table and let Max do the rest for us. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to begin, we're going to head start with a box. And you can just drag it out in the viewport here. We're going to edit the settings so that doesn't matter. And I have some settings pre-chosen here to make a nice looking table. So there we are. So for length, we put 120. For the width, we put 60. And for the height, we're going to put 3. And now I'm going to affect its position. I'm going to zero it to the world. And then I'm going to raise it up 32. So now the bottom of the box is at 32Z. So this is a good height off the floor. Now we're going to go into the settings here, into the properties, and we're going to change this into an editable poly. And we're going to go to our edge mode here, and I'm going to select all the way across and give it one connect, and then select all the way across the other way and do one connect as well. Now that we have our zero pivot in the center of our object, what we can do now is go to polygon mode, and from above, I'm going to delete three quarters of the table. I only need the one quarter to work with, so that's fine. So let me actually delete all but this quarter. That way we can face the camera. There we are. So hit delete, and now we have one fourth of a table. But you'll notice when I come out of edit mode, my pivot is still right here at the center of where the total shape was. That's because the pivot has transferred from when this used to be a box. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and rename this. We're going to call this Polygon Pilgrimage, episode 13, table. There we go. And while we're at it, let's do our usual where we have black wireframes and a gray material. All right, there we are. So let's go ahead and add some detail before we start multiplying quarter panels here to create the whole shape. We detail it first, and then we let Max take over and duplicate that detail. We shouldn't have to work any harder than we want to. So, now what we're going to do is select this edge here, and I'm going to hit Ring, and hit my Connect, and set it for two segments, and hit OK. This will give us some edges to work with. More specifically, we're going to be working with vertexes in order to design our shape a little bit more. So what I want is to select the bottom ed the bottom vertexes, excuse me, and the ones directly above that one. So you should have six in total. And now I'm going to hit my R button to go to my scale tool. I'm actually going to right click the scale tool up here so I can give it an exact percentage. And I'm going to hit 95% and hit enter. And what this does is this scales in the shape by 95% of where it was all around. So now what we have to do is a little bit of tweaking because I want a very specific shape here. We're going to have to recenter some of these edges. We see that this came in nice, but problem is when I look at the table from here, this is not lined up and therefore when we duplicate the object, and mirror it, it's not going to line up. We're going to have a gap. So we're going to recenter these. So luckily, it's nice and easy. These are just set to zero. There we go. Now, you need zero along the x. That way, they move just this way. But we keep our curve here. Same thing over here. These two vertices need to be zeroed along the y. And now they line up nice, and we keep our curve all the way around. So now that we're done with the table portion for now, we're going to go ahead and work on the legs. So let's go back up to our primitives and choose a box. 
and in the top view, approximately in this area, we're going to drag out a cube and kind of take a look. And I think 3 by 3 is pretty good here. We might end up going a little bit bigger. Let's go 4 by 4 just so we have some extra space. So finish off dragging it out and I'm going to hit here 4, 4, and 24 and enter. There we go. So let's look at this guy here. Actually we need him to be 32 to touch the bottom but we're going to create a shape from down 24 so hold on to that thought. Now we're going to work on this guy independently of the rest of the model so let's hold control or rather alt excuse me and go Q. Now this will isolate the selection you see here this box tells us that we're isolated so there are other objects in the scene but we're only working with this one at the moment and if I hit this button, we'll go back to the scene. So that's great, but for now we want to we want to be working on just this guy. Let's go ahead and send this guy to the world. We just positioned him in order to get a vague idea of the size we wanted, but we want to work on it centered to the world so that we have definite axes that we can work off of here. Now I'm going to go in here to the length, width, and height segments, and I'm going to give him two on the length and the width, and I'm going to give him four segments on the height. So if you look at him now, you see we have the length and width segments are so that we can do a similar thing where we're going to divide this up into quarters and only work on one quarter at a time. And these bottom three quarters we're going to get rid of because we're going to have a cylindrical shape there to kind of add some extra detail. So let's right click, turn it into an editable poly and we will select and delete the bottom three segments. There we go. The important part here is that our pivot is still at the bottom of the world where the, where the box's pivot was when we created it. So we know that we can move it around properly, but we have this kind of floating geometry for now that we want to work with. Now from above, we're going to select another three segments of the uh, three quarters, and we're going to delete those and I'm going to select this top piece and delete that because we're never going to see it. So you should really end up with only two polygons here but they're accurately positioned and that's the real trick. Alright, so moving forward what we're going to do is add some detail to this shape. Let's go to our edge mode and select this edge and we're going to go to the chamfer tool. My first chamfer I'm going to set this to 0.35 and click apply and then I'm going to drag it down to 0.15 and click OK. Now what that did is it did one chamfer and then immediately just said based upon that result I'm going to now chamfer again tell me what you want and we put in our two values. So now that we've got that complete let's drag our selection through the middle and hit our connect button again and again we're going to do two segments click OK I'm going to grab polygon selection and select all the polygons in the middle and I'm going to bevel these. Now we don't want that, that looks stupid but what we're going to do is set these to negative 0.5 so we do an inward bevel and now we're going to do a negative 0.37 kind of a weird number but what that does I'm going to click OK is this will get us this inward dent that we're looking for and now if we select and delete these two extra faces here. These are just about flat so that when we symmetry or mirror this shape once this way and then that whole thing again over this way, these are going to line up perfectly or close enough that we can weld them all together. Okay, so now what we need is the cylinder part that's going to go from here to the floor. So let's get out of edit mode, come back to our standard primitives and we need a cylinder. So from above, I'm going to drag out a cylinder. Doesn't really matter what the settings are to begin with because we're going to edit them. And I have here our radius is 1.2. Our height is 24.15. I'll explain that in a moment. We only want one height segment. And let's give it 24 sides. 
Now we are going to affect its position as well and just make sure it's absolutely zeroed. And now let's have a look. So obviously we want this to taper, so we'll take care of that in a moment. But let me explain about the 24.15. 24 on the Z comes up to exactly this point here. If I do an F12 on that spot, there you go, 24. So the cylinder is just ever so slightly taller so that it will eventually press into the shape and we won't have to worry about light leaks or anything of that nature. So that's all that's for. All right, let's get set up. Now what we're going to do is edit our cylinder. So let's go in here and turn it into an editable poly and select the top face, delete that, we're never going to see it. Let's select the bottom face and go into our scale tool and we're going to scale at 50%. There we go. That looks very nice. Now just like the quarter piece here of the leg, we only need a quarter of the table because it's or of the cylinder, pardon me, because it's going to mirror over as well. So let's select, select, and you'll notice we got the bottom section selected in there as well. That's fine because we'll re recreate that later on, so we'll delete everything. Now what we should end up with is this really thin piece and you can see kind of looking from below here if I turn off the grid you can see this is prime for symmetry. So we're almost there. Alright so to finish off this piece what we're going to do is go back to our box here and I'm going to go to attach and attach the cylind cylindrical piece. Now that we have that all attached we're going to exit isolation and we have our quarter of a of a leg of the table. Pardon me, couldn't think of the word. <laughs> so, what we only have a quarter though, and even when, if we put this in position, say over here somewhere, and in a bit, when we mirror or symmetry the table, this is not going to get mirrored or symmetried. So we need to mirror symmetry that piece in and of itself and then we will worry about solidifying that object, making it a part of the table and then it carries with the table. So we're going to use the same technique twice so you get to see it pretty well. So it's really simple. I just go up here and to my modifiers I'm going to add a symmetry and automatically it's set to X, slice along mirror, weld seam. That's perfect. Now you see here it's duplicated this shape over this line so we have twice the shape. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right away add a second one and you won't see any effect because it's trying to do X again but if I do Y and I'm going to flip it because it was trying to do an invert of itself. Now what I've done is I've taken this shape, mirrored it over this axis, then taken that whole result I mirrored over this axis, which in essence completes the shape. So we now have a top section, a bottom section, and we only had to make one fourth of each. Now, in the interest of time for the video here, I'm not going to cover how to close these holes, but as you can see, we do have some holes here that need to be closed, but they're very simple. Bridge across, fill in like we've done before, and you'll be just fine. All right, so Finishing up here, we have our completed leg, so I'm going to call this leg, and I'm going to collapse the shape and go to vertex and weld, and with a weld of 0.1 here, you can see that it doesn't change, so if I up this just a little bit, make sure that there's no problems there. Yep, no problems. So everything is very nicely welded. That's done, so I'm going to put this on black and the gray. There we go, we have a nice table leg. Now we need to make sure it's in the right position before we attach it to the table. So I already have the position figured out here for you guys. It is 56.26.0 but that was from, that's from the other end. So, Alright, so we're gonna do it on the fly here together. So that's gonna be 26, negative 56. I did it the other way last time. There we go. That looks nice. 
and it touches exactly the top here. Now you could also move these vertices up a little bit into the table just to make sure that the table doesn't get messed up with light leaks or problems. If you're going to see the underside of the table, that's important. So back to our table, I can go into my attach and attach the leg. And now same trick with, as we did with the, with the leg, we're going to add more symmetries. So we add a symmetry to the table. You see it goes across. And now we're going to add another symmetry and flip it again. And there you go. All four legs are now positioned at the exact same way you positioned it from this corner automatically. There's no duplicating an object and moving it around and du double checking your math because you went over the axis line. You know, it's perfect because it's mathematically perfect based upon the tools that are already there. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please follow me on Twitter and let's get the word out so that we can all work together to improve. And as always, take a look at the quote at the bottom of the page. And I will see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.